I mean, as, as far as nostalgia, collectability, yeah. and, you know, you're never... Rarity. It's Sasquatch riding a unicorn with two handfuls of hen's teeth. there I was minding my own business and I drive by this house and I see this it's like a beacon it was calling to me there's my my logo you obviously recognize that ATC this old trike registered trademark so I had the family pull over because I saw this 250R poking out of the garage, and lo and behold, this tricycle guy came out. In the flesh. And he had his Hondas on display, so I think we ought to go see what this guy knows and what he has to, to show us, don't Probably you think? not a lot. It won't take long yeah, to tell you. Well, let's get after it. So this is my pal tricycle guy, which nope. you've heard me shout out on the channel quite a bit. More than enough times and more than I deserve. But thank you, I appreciate it. Well, I think you deserve it. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But Mr. Tricycle Guy reached out to me and, and knew I was going to be in the neighborhood. And we planned to uh, do a little show and tell. He's got some John Deere going on in here. Is that a Husqvarna or a Steel? Echo. I can read. Lots of cool goodies. But tell me about some of your three wheelers. Right here front and center is the big bore, which I highlighted in a video uh, previously. It's a 77 millimeter stock jug with a really big sleeve, DG head, and actually a Bassani exhaust. And I heard you in your previous video uh, That's rare. Talk, talking about the shorty pipes, and I want you yeah. to look at some and see if I have one, because I got some other aftermarket air foam pipes. Uh, got all the proper attire to dress <laughs> it up with later there, and uh, just trying to Stay pure and traditional. I got the gold wheels on it. And uh, so it's the DG Starburst head. And very you were hard to get apparently. And you were telling me that those will not fit on a, a three hundred jug. Not fit on a three hundred jug. I have some three hundred jugs I can show you. They have seven head bolts. The DG has six as a standard does, which would be any or red or black cylinder that was standard two forty eight cc. But you've punched that out to 290? 295. 295. That's actually, a, a 300 kit is actually 76 millimeter, and that is 77 millimeter. And that was done, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, it was done by the previous owner to me. I bought this thing with a red 82 motor in it, and then that was his racing motor. He raced um, locally around here, northeast type of racing. I tried to file that off, but not <laughs> enough. When I find a set of those, those things are coming off. But they're so hard to find. I yeah. cannot find. I can find tank shrouds for anything else all day long. If you have any tank shrouds for tricycle guy, leave a comment. They we'll track you down. Perfect. They they can be cracked. I can live with a crack. Now that's the copy tire, right? Uh, that's a very similar looking one. It's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. So but Duro's I, making a nice copy, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really good for the eighty three, eighty four R, and then the first gen X. Very close to that. And I like my Ken the Scorpions, as you've probably noticed on my other ones. Rare Bassani. Now, Bruce Allman's got Bassani decals on that, that blue line. Why don't you have a, a, a Bassani detail on that? I, think, I need one, too. I don't know where he scanned them from, but I think he got some really good ones. And this is a 91 TRX 250X. This was my uh, entry into the Sport Honda pool so to speak dipping my toe in there boy those front tires i remember you saying something about them those look about as good as anything you're going to see find anything closer yeah they were very close but they're 21s i wanted 22s because it just fills the wheel well up a little nicer and with the back ones yeah. pumped up as hard as i have them yeah it's nicer to have a 22 why you got those pumped up so hard taller gear yeah less shifting this was actually the first now, I know, tricycle guy, tear <laughs> me up. 
that was actually the first thing I ever rode. My uncle bought that brand new at a local dealer for his kids, my cousins, who uh, are much older than I am. And that was the first thing we ever rode. And this is the exact one? Yes. I have the paperwork and everything. My dad bought it from him probably in 95 or That's 97 nice. when we were little. I was like four years old. First gear, you know, 10 Seagull millimeter size. throttle screw, it moved about that much. Yeah. And we thought we were flying. But I've actually swapped some stuff over the years. Uh, the fenders are still its fenders, but the seat I changed, the recoil I changed, and they, I just I bought another 86 that was in rougher overall shape, but it had a good recoil, a good seat, so I just yeah. did some swapping to make it work. The little rubber plugs that always dry rot, fall out, and take a hike. That's the tool kit right there. And uh, so I just dressed this one up just because now I'll have it forever and then it'll get passed along to the next one in line. So if you don't know, the, this is an 86 TRX 70. They made these two years, 86, 87. The only difference being 87 had a key, and different rear, decals, and the rear brake, rear brake foot pedal. pedal. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. And it's, you know, being that these were kids' machines, it was rare to see one survive as nice as that. Uh, I don't know who ran it harder, us or my cousins, but it got ran hard. <laughs> now this is... We'd pull it into the garage and it would sit there and go tick, 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 tick. It was that hot. This is one of them there Christmas specials, right? That's a blue 110. You can call it what you want. 84 blue 110. So they made the blue ones for two years, 83, 84. We all know the overlapping hockey sticks is 84 decal. It's so nice. I don't have to explain to you what it is. You just start going right on. This is nice. This looks like original front. That's an 83 front. That's 84, right. 84 would have had the little... Pro-Ams, yeah. The back ones are Carlisle or some nasty thing yeah. that I hate. Well, this looks really nice because normally these will develop the cracks right here. Yeah, it's not terrible. Yeah. Trunk lid is there. Yes. Those are a hundred dollar bill right now. Surprised to see that. Very nice. But yeah, I mean, you look close. There's some nicks and scratches on it, but it is a survivor. None of these are restored. None of these have been touched up or anything. I always it bothers me. Yeah. When somebody goes through a laundry list of new parts. Yeah. And then they tell me it's all original. It's one or the other. It ain't both. And this big red's really nice. I won't say mint. I know you don't like that. No, yeah, that but word this... is not allowed. Very, very clean. We'll say that. It's got a Speedo on it. Not, We're not talking swimwear. So this is original to the machine. So this machine has 1,185 miles. It's actually propped up on some lumber there uh, because the right rear tire has split. And uh, air comes out of it faster than you can put it in. We're going to do some trickery for the museum exhibit and try to prop it on some gotcha. 6 by 6 can, or something. Can you tell me about the museum exhibit you got uh, that you're participating be, in? As of May 15th, it's going to start. It's the AACA Auto Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, check out their website, Facebook. They may not have anything posted yet. The last I knew, the guy in charge was getting them some images. He actually wanted some pictures of my lineup and my stuff and they're going to start doing publicity and getting the word out about it and they do have some kind of motorcycle type swap meet or something there in june so if you can go to that it'd be worth your while to see what's inside and possibly buy something out in the parking lot while the swap meet's going on very cool now how many machines are you putting in that uh those four okay uh, those two are clean these two have not been clean that's why they're covered this one and then three of the 250Rs, which we will get to in just a... Wait, second. you've got more machines than this? I've got a few more wow. than this. But you were telling me before we got the camera out that you do you have the generator to go on the back no, of this? No, i got to get one. Okay. It, it takes an EM500. That's what was in the literature. Yeah. And you probably know, but the pads are spaced right. for the feet of the generator to be bolted on. I bought probably the next size up generator thinking it would fit the gray ones yeah and uh these were orange it will and not. gray yes mcworth uh put together a nice 84 oh my big gosh, red that's the coolest yeah. stuff man i don't know where he finds that he everything of his is like spotless and a couple things I, he's even said Oops. that he look at that, how nice that rack is i think you can even 
It ain't this one. It must be the other one. There's a weld booger inside the rack, and you can hear it slopping back. And I've forth. got new old sock 200S racks that and have it, that. It's, it's like that is perfection. It doesn't need to be real yeah. perfection. It needs to be factory yeah. original. But I've never seen these on anything either. They're like a little vinyl plastic cover, and I have to believe the original owner put those on. Yeah. To I protect would, it. I would say that too. But, but look at this. Like normally, these are all wore from the heel. Because these stand out a little bit prouder than that, but yeah. your heel would rub right there. But that has like nothing. And Look the at plastic that. on the brake levers and stuff. Now this thing hasn't been washed since 2014 because the decals are starting to lift and curl. Yeah. And every time you take a wash rag by it, a little more chips off. Dry clean only. Yeah. So it's going to get one final washing. The plow is going to go on. It's going to go to Hershey, and when it comes back, it's going in the basement. The, I mean, the secret underground ATC. That's right. Area. That's right. But I mean, a lot of times you see rust in here and stuff, and this is just dirt from sitting, but there's very minimal rust. That thing is super, super nice. And at the time, I paid a lot for it, but now I could sell it for probably five to eight hundred more than I paid. Yeah. And with the blade on it, you're talking fifteen hundred more than I paid. So. And these are your plows. That's two of them. There's one, one more in the satellite location, and then there's <laughs> one more in the underground ATC layer. And here's your backup 84. That that gets a lot of beating. Yeah. This is the one you were plowing with? That that one plows a lot of snow and it hauls a lot of dirt and firewood. And you can tell because the hitch hole was no longer round. <laughs> a lot a lot of wagon time on that one. And again, it's not perfect, it ain't pretty, but I would recommend those tires for plowing snow. They work excellent. That's great. Turf tamers. Can you tell us about this before we maybe check out the, the underground layer? The quad here, I can throw this back. This was actually my kindergarten teacher's, and her husband passed away when I was in kindergarten. And she didn't know how to use any of the lawn equipment or anything that her husband had done. And we went to her house, and my dad showed her how to run this because at the time I was obviously in kindergarten, I wasn't doing much riding. Uh, he showed her how to start it and operate it and use the riding tractor they had and mow and do all the stuff she needed to do. And uh, they had a little cart behind it and my brother and I were, he's two years older than I am, and we were riding in the wagon and she was a little jerky on the shifting. So it was like a big delay and then a three quarter <laughs> throttle pickup when she went into the next year. So it was a fun ride back in the wagon. That's but cool. Very low hour, uh, original fronts. And original left rear, the right rear is a Chevron. I think they got a hole in it or something, but it's still a really nice low hour yeah. Chevron, big red. Yeah, so that would be original big red tire. The originals, which you got over here, is hard to see. That's the same tire that's on the the TRX 200. They in '86 or '7 they went to a weird one that just had like bars and it was kind of yeah. real wedgish looking, kind of woolly bugger looking. But this is 85 TRX 250, same motor, drivetrain. The four-wheel big red. Yeah. Longer swing arm. Uh, a lot of people will take the swing arm out of this and put it on a 250SX to gain okay. some, some length. I think it's a two-inch longer swing arm. But that's nice and clean. I'm sorry to have you drag out the well, cover this, twice. Yeah, this but has a detachable headlight, as does the big red. Yeah. So a lot of the same features. And the optional uh, oil temp light. This was not factory, or this was not standard equipment. That was an optional. Option. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. I never looked that up. I would like to get the fan kit for it, and then get one of them tow behind mowers. Then I can run the fan and I can tow the mower because my yard's so rough from you know, some clown ripping his three wheelers around Jeez. and making ten inch deep ruts all the time. These people. I'm telling you, I gotta move where people don't ride in my yard. Well, I think at this point, maybe we'll take the, the trip through the uh, trike cave, down around under the waterfall, and maybe uh, find ourselves in the underground layer. So, yes, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. So if you're willing and if you're brave enough, join us and we'll find you there. So we've been traveling for about two hours. Satellite location. Satellite location somewhere in the woods. I don't know, even know where I am, but we're about to see this this ramp set up. Highly engineered. Yeah. Oh, we got a counterweight. We got counterweight. We got pulleys. And you know, 
left left hand left handed operation man balanced and it stays whatever position you put it in and yes it is as steep as it looks and when you're trying to shoot a 70 up there there's a lot of commitment involved and not rail your head on that two by four yeah it's it, it's really close to the 200s you put your chin on the headlight and that's the only way you know you're going to make it that's funny mind if i yep, climb yep. a little bit stay on the uh slats it's it's flip-flop weather so my trusty flip-flops watch your head so we got an 8370 up here. That's my beater. That one gets a lot of ride time. Hidden, hiding the uh, 8570 behind it. Man, what happened to that seat? It got a small split in it and I rode it and it became a bigger uh, split. It was only about an inch long when it first opened up. That's a nice tank. Yeah, I think that's got fork dents in it up at the front. This is a nice 86 200S. These are rare birds right here. That actually had the windshield on it that's on my 85. It's got the CMP headlight guard. I was going to ask who made that. And then it had a CMP hitch and CMP rack. Like they dressed that thing up out of the CMP catalog. Yeah. Uh, those tires were not on it. It had a couple different mix matches. So I got them off eBay and they all were split and I just didn't have tubes. Now, I'm told that the Pro Ams aren't necessarily what came on this. So, I believe Tim Keister, if you know, familiar with his name, he, uh, sh so the 200 SX, the 86 200 SX had 2211.8. And are they 250 SX tires? Yeah. Yeah, I think those were also. They, they could have been offered. That, I know that the 84 is definitely a one owner. Yep. Those are the pro-ams that yes. I want. Yes. So I think 86 is the only seen. only questionable. So you could get other ones. Did other ones come standard on them? I think that was a standard offering. Depends uh, on what dealership you got it from. And it blew my mind. And it was one of those things where I said... Never heard that before. Yeah, I said, no, you're wrong. But <laughs> got another 85 hiding over here. Yeah, I have two 85-70s. Uh, again, not perfect. That's got a saddleman seat on it, I think, yeah. and the rear fender... Uh, succumb to the tire there. Oh, yeah. That often happens. Um, 84, the, 125M. The front fenders either get trashed from the engine or the tire rubbing them, and the back ones get folded up, and that's usually the case. What the camera doesn't show is that it's probably 20 degrees hotter up here than it was when I came in this. This is the secret above ground <laughs> ATC layer. It's solar heated. <laughs> All right. Oh, geez, there's my head. All right. Now these are the air cooled pipes that I don't know what's what. I'm pretty sure this is 8384 because it has to duck in around the frame. Okay. 8182 should go straighter because it stays outside and runs right along the seat. But I, this I think is another Bassani. He had this one together. That one I don't know what it is. The red one I don't know what it is. And the other red one I don't know what it is. So my go-to guys for air-cooled are information, outside of you, of course, is Ethan Bennett and uh, Chris Piccarello, whose name I butchered in my air-cooled 250R video. It is not Piccariello, because that would be how it's spelled, but it's uh, Piccarello. Okay. So there you go, Chris. I'm but, not an English major either. I'm just a tricycle guy. Can we get the ramp moved up, and then we'll... We'll, re yeah, we'll restart right, right. this. Hand, oh, yeah, watch this. One hand operation. Now, this is tricky because you don't want the crank to fall. Yeah, what's that crank out of? That's a big block Chevy. It was all cracked. So it got in the scrap pile. Then you let that lay down like so. And you just catch the counterweight. Just prop it. Perfect. So it doesn't destroy anything. This is a high tech lock mechanism. <laughs> and then this is some air cool stuff. This 81 engine goes with that frame. Uh, previous owner. That's a lot of my air cool stuff came from the same guy. Uh, he redid the tank and the seat and was working on restoring it. He didn't get to the motor yet. So how long you been collecting? Since 2014. 2014. That's, That's when I got into collecting. I had a three wheeler before that, but I wasn't. 
Actually, the first one I bought with the intent to collect was the 84 200S from our local district magistrate where I lived. We went over, we went to church with the guy, matter of fact, went to help him move a piano, and there's this 200S sitting there, and I was like, what are you doing with that? Mm -hmm. And the legend started. But these, I can't substantiate in any manner. And I know Bassani liked to use factory heat shields. He put a lot of the lugs on for the heat shield. So I don't know what these are. I half think that might be 81, 82. That, I think, is 83, 4 with that harder bend because the shock reservoir sits there and the frame goes down. Okay. I don't know enough about them. I haven't been into them. Yeah. So, that's my poorly based guess. So, this is your nicer plow, or is this just the other plow? That's the nicest non-new old stock one I have. That's the nicest used one I have. You can tell by how much paint's on it. Uh, 86125 M you don't see a lot of, and I can't bring myself to get rid of it until I find a nicer one. Yeah. There'd be a big hole in the collection if I didn't. Headlight guard. Headlight surround with the guard. So that's a double option there, and you get, you've got the rack mounts poking through. Yeah, the rack's laying back there. It's all bent up against that 200X wheel. That is yep. an 86 200X that the guy was working on building. That's where I got the air cool stuff. I basically bought the guy out. He decided to get out of collecting and whatnot. That is an 87 way back in the back, and it is trashed. If it didn't have a VIN sticker, I wouldn't have bought it. Yeah. But this is my rider. I got the DG pipe on it. I got an engine that's started. I got a 10 and a quarter piston. I got to send the cam out the web. I ported the head myself. Uh, I got a whole whole engine off eBay, and that's the one I'm working with, so I hope it doesn't need a crank pin and bearings because you just can't find any of that stuff. And a funny story, this 83 Big Red, I got 82, 3, 4, and 5. I need 6 and 7. Yeah. And the 82 is not in the best of shape. I'd like to replace it with a better one, but just haven't had a chance to. But this one and the 200S up there came from the same dealer. So there's a very good likelihood they sat next to each other in the showroom when they were brand new. Mm. So that's kind of cool that all these years later they are still sitting next to each other. And you've got an 85 and an yes. 86 here. That's an 86, yep. Yeah. That one's going to get a ESR 330 and basically be a sand duner. Got the high flight seat. I want to get the yeah. four gallon tank. The Pro Wedge 2s. On new old stock Dick CPEC 88 rims. Huh. I think they're 4110, 4115, 8x8. Yeah. So that will fit Yamaha also? I think so. Very cool. But I didn't even get stickers on that yet, but I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm, I really wanna do a 330. I'll never get anywhere near sand, so it'll probably just be me riding it here in the snow and whatever. Well. This is undisclosed location number one. Yep. Well, let's duck out of here and then we can uh, Take this to the, the holy grail of the underground layers. Signed Mike Co. Second Gen R poster. Mark, I don't know who you are, but we got your poster here. <laughs> it was probably at an estate sale and somebody profited massively because I bought it. That's a real bumper sticker. There's a real matchboxes, uh, real manuals and a little uh, Tonka clutch popper and a deck of cards. Got goodies everywhere. I gotta up my game, I think. Oh, and look at this. Is that a 72 or a 73? Oh, geez, probably three, I think. I think I checked it. The motor may not be original because it's got way too many digits. There's like an extra one in there and it's like, not very far into the number. It's like a nine digit number and he started with like a seven digit number or something. I got those tags like two years apart on eBay and they're from the same dealer in the same huh. year. You got a, a model? Who made that model? Uh, I don't know. Grab it. See who. I don't know. I don't think it's Mattel. 
It might be Milton Bradley or somebody like that. Is this Polaris? Those no, that's... were stompers. You remember the little stompers, the little truck pulling things? They had the weight sled and stuff. Huh. They got little electric motors. They drive around, but they're burnt out. And now you got this. These are these tassels are mint right here. These are mint <laughs> original NOS OEM mint tassels. And that means something coming from you. <laughs> what do you think, Palin? And this, cool. this is real. I think it's Odyssey, though. I don't know where that would bolt to a three wheeler, hmm. but this is real. This came from a Honda dealer. Uh, it was actually dealer yeah. number one eleven in the United States. I happen to know him huh. pretty well, and uh, he takes good care of me. I got a lot of cool stuff from him. So the nineteen eighty one eighty five sold for just under fourteen hundred. Wish I could forty one years cheap. ago. <laughs> Making you feel old yet? This is great. And then your coffee table. Only the finest reading material here. I bet you a lot more people would go to the dentist if they still had these laying in there. That's great. Dirt wheels, dirt bike, three wheeling. Nice article on the very new ATC 250R. I wonder what sort of research and development work they did developing those. I wouldn't have a clue. You wouldn't know? No, I'm hmm. just a liar. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's something. Some burn up pistons here. Look at <laughs> they, this guy. What's this out of? That was a NASCAR piston. We went to uh, five or six of the shops RCR, Gibbs, Hendrix, and those were pistons from RCR. That's a, that's a 1999, 2000 ish NASCAR piston. The one on the left is a very high quality reproduction brought to you by Blue Line Graphics. I've heard of him. Yeah, he's pretty cool. The one on the right, I have no idea where that came from. And I just bought the piston rings because the graphic was cool with the little crazy animated yeah. dude. That's kind of like my drawing in the driveway, actually. That's, I thought that's what it was. Oh, see, it's, I mean, it's a dead ring. I like that. That's a repop. Well, I think we got to get going on to the uh, the main event. But wait, there's more. There's more? There's more. I suppose we can... <laughs> didn't know how much more there was. Oh, uh, keeps... The house ain't that big, but there's a lot of junk in here. Oh, jeez. These are all real. That is a book cover. You remember the old paper book covers? Yeah. And it doesn't have three wheelers on, but it's... I haven't ever seen one before. That's real. That's Dean Sundahl, right? I believe it is, yeah. And that's got the DG head on it. And look at the swing arm. It's like a weird eye beam looking thing. You know, almost like Honda was creating one-off stuff at the factory in order to prove their technology. Hmm. Well, what would I know? <laughs> and this, this is kind cool. of the fairing bracketry. That fairing and those steel wheels with the pro wedges are going to find their way on an 83 200X at some point in the future. But... These are all model lineup posters. This was Team Honda uh, some years ago. And, I mean, that's all the big names. Mike Coe, Mike Chester, Curtis Sparks, Wes McCoy, Mark Wexeldurker, Dorfer. Yeah. And then, I don't know how to say that guy's name, and then Sundahl. Very cool. But that's autographed by Dean. And this is all stuff I got on eBay, so somebody might have just scribbled that on there and sold it to me, and I got duped. But it looks right. I've seen him sign other stuff, so they copied good if they did. Well, and then there's uh, maintenance posters, two of them. Man. Babe, I'm slacking. And this is the bag and the rubber band that that poster came in. In 1982. How about that? Bag and rubber band. So, go ahead and find me another one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of these pliers. Jeez. They're real deal, too. It's for big nuts. All right. Are these pro wedges also? Yes. Man. They were on those wheels. 
and I don't want to break them down because they seem to be in decent shape. And, and they're pinstriped. More, yeah, they're 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 steel. Huh. They're some kind of aftermarket catalog order type thing, and those other ones, these I studded years ago, probably three years ago. I put studs in them to do something with. But very very cool in that bag is a little chair it's a little pipe sectional chair you've been sits on uh -huh. the floor it's a real low beach chair and it says hrc on it so How about that? i don't know where that came from but these posters are awesome well one day blue line is going to get over here and scan them and then you can purchase one of your very own royalty is going to me of course <laughs> that's right <laughs> And it continues. The library. Yeah. This, this, got is, some... this is what I do here. I just sit here and thumb through the literature quite often. And I read and enjoy what it has to tell me. <laughs> and then I tell my friends. This got some 87 big red side covers hanging up on there. That's display. why they're in here and not out anywhere else. This also, would you not be the coolest kid in math class if you took your homework out of that folder? Autographed by King Dean himself. Wow. Super duper cool. And this book right here is your ultimate resource in identifying a lot of things. Yes. Yep. First, before you get into all this. We got the accessory catalogs. I mean, who who wouldn't want to go to the track dressed up like that? I mean, come on. <laughs> that mustache is on point. I'm telling you, he's he's heading for Tom Selleck in a hurry. Well, very very cool. What's this poking out right there? Look at that. That's and what I look like. Don't look at the one under it. That's what I look like right in mine. Oh gosh, <laughs> cover that up. Some of this stuff will be at the museum, too. We're trying to figure out how exactly we're going to display it, but we are working on that. Ooh. But I'm tripping. Yeah, I'm sure you are tripping. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know how to display these because they're so old and fragile. Yeah. But there's some of the cool stuff. Yeah. Super. Shall we? I'm chomping. I'm itching. Once you get one, yeah, of I these, need one of these. These are these are invaluable. Look, this is how I know so much about tires. I can't share this because then everybody's going to try to buy one, and then I'm never going to get one. This is true. They will. There's your XAs. Yep. I know you love them. All different denominations of Pro Wedge. And then this is the 301, which would be SX and 200 mm -hmm. quad SX. That's 200x. We now know the differences. We do. But, Very cool. Yeah, there's more than you can shake a stick at in these books. Almost had one once. We were watching. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have time traveled another couple hours. We've made it under the waterfall and through the dark forest, through the cave. And we are in the underground lair. The catechism that is Honda ATCs. Yes. So we are in spare tire storage. We're looking at some 250ES big red tires, some 200ES, 200E tires, 400EX tires. And if that's not enough, let's switch around to here. We got some pro wedges, some uh, 250SX tires. See, I've learned 200M tires yep. or uh, 83 ATC 200. Possibly, yeah. There's some Carlisle and some Darrow sprinkled in there. PV 702s. Those are shot 200. 200X. Because the difference is no dimple right there. Dimple. Those are so worn dimple. you probably couldn't tell. Did you ever? We. Did you ever those are. Like the, those are rare. Yeah, those are 185S, I think, and they got the fat bead for the two piece. Yep. So, those were on eBay also. Did I ever what? See the 
87 rear, did you ever highlight the rear wheels because everybody thinks that they're quad wheels the with the rolled with the closed lip yeah I did on my 200x video okay. it's hard to show on camera yeah it's you got to really get in behind there yeah but they're in key and they're dated right so it's the the bead stops here the edge of the aluminum stops here so this rolls up and around not like a 300 EX fronts wheel. do as well so that is a quad wheel. yeah that's trx that's a did quad wheel. well this isn't much down here you made it sound like you had a bunch of cool stuff going uh, on i'm a big talker you know so i just got a couple engines apart there and some tires new old stock plow by the washing machine yeah, I tripped over that the other day and hurt my little pinky toe. Jeez. Well, if that's it, I'm out of here. I'm not going to waste my time. Oh. Oh. Tricycle guy. Jeez. Why didn't we start down here? Look at this. Because it's the best for last. And what is this? Some some homemade job? Yeah, I think somebody, some kid and her dad got a little crazy with the Sawzall and the welder and things and... Wow. So, I've seen the video, so I know what this thing is. And I know we don't have the time to uh, to get into all the details, but I will, I will share the link to your videos uh, so people can find out about this. But tell me, in your words... What, what you think this thing is. Because, you know, it's the all best, opinion, right? The best, yeah, <laughs> everything's my opinion. This has the rare optional drum brake in the front. I mean, who, who didn't want to remove that stock original disc and put a drum on there for extreme stopping power? Uh, the best evidence I can gather, it was made sometime in the late 70s, I'd say between 77 and 79, by Honda or Americans under contract with Honda to test and R&D frame geometry as by the neck. Now you can throw that totally away and there's still more here wrong than could be explained away by pre-production, production, whatever. If you took an 81 and tried to build this out of it, you couldn't because you'd have to grind off the stud standoffs for the engine mounts and then weld these on, which would be going backwards in time. You also would have to do away with the apparatus that holds the rear brake cable for the rear drum that we all know 81 production units had. This has a hydraulic system. But you can argue with me and say it's an 82. This is not the same master that an 82 has. This is substantially beefier and has two lugs. This has one lug here and one lug in the back because one would obviously rotate when you stomp on the brake. So... If you want to try to tell me it's an 82 frame, you'd have a hard time because an 82 frame definitely would not have this. This was a bad idea, and I think they were probably breaking stuff because it was all welded. Mm -hmm. Bolts flex, welds don't. And I just so happen to have corroborating literature here that shows if you can see that number. I can't. Take your light away. <laughs> we can see a number there. And then that has a very similar number. Yep. So, nobody made that engine in their backyard. And also, one of the big, huge things that everybody likes to tell me I'm wrong about, nobody made these fork tubes in their backyard either. But, these bolts are parallel with the axle. Production unit, which... If that was production and somebody cut it all up, would have this for it. That'd be offset, yeah. So, so what you're saying is this is probably one of a couple prototypes for the 250R experimental pre-production unit. And if you want to hear more about that, click the link or search out Tricycle Guy for I think it's your first couple of videos are all about this in detail. Two of them are, yeah. Yep. So. But you've, you know, this this looks horrendous compared to what the rest of them look like in here. But you but you couldn't perfect. touch it. Yeah, it's, it's perfect, perfect the way, the way it, is. it is. Yeah, it would be wrong to touch it. So you've got another first gen. 
And so. these first three are actually going to the Hershey Museum also. Very cool. With the ones at the other locations. So this is 81. We can tell for a few indicators there's no vented holes in the disc. The decals back there say 81. Kill switch. Kill switch on the throttle. Then second gen, 83 or 84. Three. That's a nice one. And see how the 250R is tall and shaky looking, cartoony looking? Yeah. See how nice and blocky the 84 are? Yeah. The 84R and 200X had that similar, and the 83, the 200, was tall and shaky and cartoony looking. So if you okay. look at that 250, you'll be able to tell okay. if it's a correct fender. Now that can easily change. That's true. So, but I have some real Pro Wedge tires there. You've got a lot of Pro Wedge tires. They they come up and a lot, you know what? I've knocked a lot of them off of Yamaha wheels. The guys huh. drag Banshees and they love the Pro Wedge tires. Beautiful 86. There's a few things wrong with that you could probably pick out pretty quick. Nice 82 over there. You know, all your, your dealership apparel. That's the other thing you got going on here. Where have you seen, what is that, eight, nine? Seven or eight, I think. <laughs> well, ATC jackets. Better. That first one is an NOS because it still has a tag, but it has that hanger on it. That's a real Honda line hanger. Nice. So it's not just the apparel, it's the apparatus to display it. There are so many things you you look at and you don't even see, and you, you look past and you, you miss. So you've got three, four, five. That's an NOS helmet. Red ATC helmets, one blue one. Two pair of used gloves, and then over under the jerseys is a new old stock pair of gloves. A mess of belt buckles. So if anybody watching this has ever bid on any of this stuff on eBay, I'm who you're bidding against. <laughs> That's funny. And then I, even, I just recently got this. And this is a real Honda Line gear bag. And I mean, it's massive. Yeah. It's I mean, it's like your average size of a cooler that might be going to the museum too he said we're just trying to find a place to jam that in but like this stuff here you just don't see when was the last time you saw a Honda team mechanic apron that's right I mean I'm pretty manly but I'd wear that apron Vinny Staffa photoshopped my head on a guy wearing one of those once that's pretty I look, cool with him. I look pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I bet you did. And then for Christmas time, you got your stocking. Yeah. You know, Santa Claus got to fill your Honda stocking. And they got more parts back here. Yeah, that's the liquid cooled pile. And I got a whole mess of pipes. There's two air cooled pipes here, and the rest are all water cooled. There's some Paul Turners. Uh, one of them, I think, is like a sand scorcher or some no name knockoff. Uh, some more tires, some seats. This is just a miscellaneous junk. The overflow. Yeah. And some of the stuff that I took off of, like the white one, all the original parts are over here for that. So this is 85. Very, very nice. In the single best color scheme they ever had. Yep. To match your 86 200X here. Those two tires there are NOS, but the front one is a 24. Ah, yep. Yeah. Why do you think they did that? I don't know. I've got the 250R was 235, yeah, 22 first two years, and then 235 the second two years, and then it was 23, 85, 86. But 350X was 23.5. Yes, and that's the thing. The 250R they dropped the tire size. I don't know if that's because they could squeeze more ground clearance out of it, or I mean, suspension travel out of it, or what. Some, I think he wants one of those boxes to go to the museum. Also, there's some keychains, some belt buckles. My mom did that early on when I didn't have scads of the stuff. Yeah. And just put them in there for me. Look at these jackets. And then there's this, just stuff everywhere. This came from my dealer buddy. And this is actually the part number that fits 85 86 250R NLS Honda body cover. There's a out of the box one. Uh, and then I have a camo one, and some of these tank covers are new in the bag yet. Now, they're yeah. not Honda. That one's Rocky. 
Um, but, and like, just, I mean, that dipstick was never Honda, but it's yeah. for a 185. It's a temperature dipstick. I just think it's cool. Uh, so. This is crazy. But, yeah, okay. Here, I got that. Cooler rack for the big red. I got a basket, so I'm slowly amassing the accessories, and that's going to sit here. I think this couch may catch on fire out in the yard yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Be a shame. 200M chrome. Chrome rack. Rear rack in the box. So I'm slowly getting there. All right, we have questions. So what's your favorite? This one. This one? I mean, as, as far as nostalgia, collectability, yeah. and, you know, you're never... Rarity. It's... it's Sasquatch riding a unicorn with two handfuls of hen's teeth. <laughs> uh, but for rider, I like this. I got the plus four axle on it. Stock jug, 38 carb V-Force. It runs snappy and strong. It's everything you want a three-wheeler to be. And in my opinion, it's what they should have come out with. Yeah. Because they were so corked up in the 85, 86 era. What's your favorite piece of uh, memorabilia? Oh, that's tough. I don't know. I don't know. I actually wear one of the jackets to Motorama. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to get some of those shirts made, and I'd, I'd wear them around all the time. I mean, I'd be grocery shopping in that shirt. But for what I paid for them, I'm not going to wear them anywhere. Yeah. But, yeah, that's hard, to, that's hard to pick. I don't know. The first three-wheel I ever bought was an 85, and the guy gave me one of these corduroy hats with it. That's cool. And it's the embroidered style corduroy yeah. hat. And you'll see these the in some of, on it. some of the old uh, interviews and stuff. The guys, you know... The camera was rolling, so they had to quick put their sponsor hat on, and they look ridiculous, but it is the <laughs> coolest thing. I had a corduroy uh, Spuds McKenzie hat back in the 80s okay. when I was just a, a young fella. You remember those days. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Well, man, I would love to to spend twice the amount of time like getting into deep dives with, with all the stuff. Your machines are beautiful, but unfortunately, we are on our way back home with many many hours to go so i gotta end it here but i the, thank you the door is always open to absolutely the secret underground undisclosed atc tricycle basement layer and if you're ever up in my area you know you get a hold of me you've got my number and I that doesn't get given that. out freely yeah. so <laughs> very short list of people get that but maybe i'll flip this around we'll we'll end it Well, thanks for watching everybody uh, on behalf of this old trike and tricycle guy this was another great tour of an amazing one collection of, one of two collaborations that'll probably be coming yeah. and next time i'll be checking your stuff out absolutely pick my stuff apart and all that but uh make sure you like and subscribe to, to my channel and tricycle guys uh, i'll post all the links and everything you need in the comments and he's got some really awesome super unique stuff and you're, you're not going to see this anywhere. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, catch us next time.